Welcome to the third and final part of my video series, where I follow and dissect Tori Deal's journey on MTV's hit reality competition series, The Challenge. Each part of the series seemed to have developed a certain theme to it. Part one was all about growing pains and how Tori Deal went from being a rookie, fresh off another reality TV show, Are You The One, to her debut on The Challenge and becoming known as Rookie of the Year. The theme of part one was all about empowerment, self-discovery, romance, and even love. In part Part 2, however, Tori went through a very public breakup. Followed by a wave of hate and backlash, she was no longer someone that the fans rooted for. Instead, they seemed to actively root against her, and it was somewhat deserved. This part, however, is kinda complicated. While Tori would go on to achieve her biggest goal since 2017, fans' view of her wouldn't change much. In fact, it would get so Tori had just broken up with her fiancé, fellow challenge competitor Jordan Wisely. The relationship would fall apart publicly and accusations of cheating on Tori's behalf had damaged her reputation to a great extent. So in view of everything, you would think that Tori would take a break from the challenge and work on processing everything that had just happened to her, but you would be wrong. While Jordan actively stayed out of the public attention while he, I assume, worked on himself, Tori would jump into filming season 37 of the challenge, known as Spies Lies and Allies, which was filmed in 2021. The newly single Tori, like super freshly single, would begin the season with a bam. She would develop a flirtatious relationship with fellow castmates, Kels. Kels is a rookie and his original show was too hot to handle. However, Kels would go home before anything would develop between the two. Now side note, I'm not shaming her here at all. She's young, gorgeous, single, and Kels is a snack. But considering all the backlash she would receive from her fellow castmates, as well as fans due to her multiple showmances, I have to cover them, especially when she would go on to be called a hypocrite for her response to Jordan when he essentially did the same thing to her later in this video. So no hate, but it has to be covered. Now to say that season 37 was dominated by the vets would be a massive understatement. The Vets Alliance, which was formed by Corey, Devon, Big T, Tori, Josh, Nanny, Casey, Nelson, Amanda, Kyle, Fessy, and Ashley, was extremely strong and effective in targeting and getting rid of the rookies one by one. Tori specifically seemed to be closest with Anissa, who she considers to be her best friend inside and outside of the house, as well as Josh and Devon. Tori's messy gameplay would continue this season. As soon as she's in power, she considers targeting Big T as revenge for the move that Big T pulled last season, which I covered in my previous video. This move would eventually send Tori home early in the game. However, by targeting Big T, Tori would be turning against the Vet Alliance, which is the majority alliance controlling the whole house. So it was a bad idea, and she was out of it by Kyle, but this is not the only messy move that Tori would be making this season or in the following season. Dasha, another rookie, and her partner are voted in instead of Big T, and Tori, with her tragic strategic gameplay, offers to help them out and vote in whoever they want, which is Michelle, only for her to go back on her word and vote in Berna instead. Naturally, Dasha is upset with her, and this leads to another fight. This whole thing gave me flashbacks to season 36. Whenever Tori is in a power position, she she does something dumb, so much so that it's getting increasingly hard to understand her gameplay. Anyways, Tasha loses the elimination and goes home, but not before reading Tori to filth in front of everyone. This is of course followed by Tori apologizing to her at the reunion, in an exact repetition of the whole Amber vs Tori fight in season 36. Lana, when you get in up with Tori, okay? You know you wanted this. You're a fake ass bitch. No, this is not true, Dad. No, 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 that's. Shut up. If you don't want to hear it, no, 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 no. I didn't come to your room, Toby. Okay. So do you have anybody that you want to go against? We have to give me show. Okay. I'm gonna see what I can do. Can I say my seat? I don't want to listen. I Shut up. I think I over politicked. 
it. I wish she wouldn't have blocked me on Instagram. I could have apologized, but I don't think she wants to hear it. And that's okay. She doesn't like me. So... Tori's game would be further complicated when Anissa, her biggest ally in the house, is injured during a daily challenge and is sent home, leaving her with only Devin and Josh to rely on. Now, keep that in mind because it will be very important later on. Tori had secured her place within the majority alliance and had managed to win a daily challenge already. She was working well with her partner, Ad, and everything was going well for her. She was determined to win this season and was on her way to do so. And then there was Pizzagate. <laughs> In perhaps the most hilarious and infuriating episode of the season, a huge fight would break out over frozen pizza. Two players would get warnings and another player would get kicked out completely. All because of pizza and well because of Cory and Tori. Let me explain. Drunk and fresh out of the club, Amber B is looking for her veggie pizza. When she doesn't find it, she goes around the house asking who ate my pizza. Tori and Cory decide to blame Fessy for it. Now I'm no Fessy fan, believe me, I actually dislike him almost as much as I dislike like Josh, but he didn't eat the damn pizza. I lied and said it was Fessy. It wasn't Fessy. He ate your pizza. I just think it would be funny if Amber thought Fessy ate her pizza. It's boring in this house right now, you know? I'm gonna stir it up a little bit and see what we can get out of it. However, a huge fight would still break out as he and Amber have issues since last season. And just last episode, he blindsided her and voted her in for elimination. So yeah, obviously this will be a huge fight. Josh gets involved since he is Amber's partner and gets into a fight with Fessy. The fight would escalate so much that Esther throw a cup of water on Amber and security had to be involved. Meanwhile, Tori is just eating popcorn and laughing, which is really not a good look for her. Especially since Josh is supposed to be her friend and she knows him damn well. She knows how easily he can be triggered. She was there last season when he lost his mind with CT and nearly got sent home. Anyway, Fessy would get kicked out of the game for laying hands on Josh. Josh. Esther and Josh, unfortunately, would only get a warning. How many chances is Josh gonna get? Seriously, I can't watch him anymore. He's so childish and he's so cringy. Chill out. It's embarrassing, dude. You're embarrassing your friends. You're embarrassing yourself. So for the rest of this season... I guess we'll keep Josh. This whole pizza gate thing really annoyed me, especially on Tori's part. She instigated the whole thing and nearly got one of her best allies kicked out. At the same time, Cory didn't get any backlash, even though he did the same thing as Tori, which is really unfair. More on pizza gate later. At this point, the game would shift from teams of two into what this season calls cells. It goes with the whole goofy theme of spies, I guess. As you can probably tell, I'm not really the biggest fan of this season. Tori would find herself in the Emerald Cell, alongside Josh, Devin, Casey, and Emmanuel. The Emerald Cell would dominate three daily challenges, securing Tori's safety in the game. And Tori would find herself flirting with yet another rookie. This time, it's this guy. Yes, him. Does he look familiar to anyone? His name is Emmanuel and he is from Survivor Romania. He's also goofy as hell. Now again, she is single and everything, but you have to think that Jordan is probably sitting at home watching his ex-fiance moving on so quickly from him on national television and kind of feeling bad for it. I know I would. Moreover, this is exactly the same situation that caused Tori so much problems last season. So much so that she had to come out publicly and say that she regretted how she handled the post-breakup with Jordan. Worst of all, she would be put on the receiving end of this 
this situation just one season later and her reaction is just, well, shocking. I'm not saying don't have fun and have a showmance, but maybe do it with a little bit more grace. Anyways, that's just my opinion. The Amrit cell would become a huge target with four daily challenge wins, far more than any of the other cells. TJ explains that the nominated player who goes into an elimination and survives has the option to infiltrate any other cell they want, whether it's the Emerald cell, the Ruby or Sapphire cell. They would essentially be able to switch places with the player of their choosing and everyone wants a place in the Emerald cell believing it to be the strongest team. Tori recognizes that her position within her team is in danger. She literally says that she is so loyal to her team that if she was to be quote-unquote stolen, she would throw the daily challenge with her new team and would rather be voted in for eliminations so she can come back and be part of the Emerald team again. Worst case scenario, if you get infiltrated now, you go to a team, we make sure that you throw the challenge on that team. Yep. If we were to win, we make sure we vote you in. You pick your partner, you come back. Which is really ironic when she goes on to do the exact opposite of that. When Amanda gets voted into an elimination against Big T, she wins and chooses to switch places with Tori, forcing Tori to leave the Emerald Cell and join the Sapphire team. In the next daily challenge, Tori would cut a deal with CT and his Ruby Cell, essentially for the two teams to work together and target the Emerald Cell. The Emerald Cell, which has Devin and Josh, Tori's closest allies in the house. And on top of that, it's a guy's elimination day. Obviously, this leads to a massive fight where Devin feels hurt and betrayed. Be my number one in this game on a male elimination, mind you. And you're trying to sabotage a team with me, Josh, and the guy that you're boning. Alan. You made a selfish ass move. That's what happened. That's what happened. So own it. Cool, Devin. I had to do what I had to do because. Okay. For the record, I feel like they are both in the wrong here. Devin has a point, Tori could have just worked with his team instead and targeted another cell instead of actively working against him and expecting him to be okay with it. Like it was so unnecessary, it wasn't even a ghost elimination day. She should have just played the game and let things work out the way they were meant to. On the other hand, Devin yelling at her and making her cry is just mean. She wasn't on his team anymore and she wanted to compete, I guess. Plus, she states that she didn't want any of the guys on her team to get nominated. Anyhow, this drives a wash between Devin and Tori. Kyle would get nominated and he would choose to go in against Josh. Kyle wins and Josh is eliminated and sent home. He was also one of Tori's closest allies in the house. Meanwhile, Amanda is viewed as one of the weakest players in the house. Plus, I can't lie, she's kinda crazy. She is also not a fan of Tori. In fact, she can't stand her. And Tori, on the other hand, resents her for stealing her spots within the Emerald team. So, when Amanda is voted in for elimination, she chooses to go in against Tori, in a move which I honestly respected. She could have chosen to go in against Nani and she might have had a chance against her, but she puts her money where her mouth is and the two go head to head. Of course, Amanda totally loses to Tori, who is nearly twice her size and made out of muscle. Tori literally picks her up like a child and carries her around. Amanda goes home and Tori punches her ticket to the final. After this episode though, the teams get changed once again, which is so frustrating. Most of the season's gameplay was done assuming that you would run the final with your team, only for it to not matter at the end. Worst of all, the final would then be switched to pairs. Like, can we just pick a format and stick to it maybe? I really don't like this season. Tori would run the final with Kyle. The two would come within seconds, specifically 10 seconds, of placing first, but ultimately they would lose to CT and his partner Casey. The winning team would be given the option of sharing the 1 million prize and they opt to give each team 100k, making this yet another season where Tori would walk out without a championship, but she did walk out with a lot of drama. Tori would come out with multiple statements after the show aired, much like in the previous seasons where she would go on to explain her mindset while filming and defend herself from the fans' sometimes harsh criticism regarding the drama which happened as a result of her and Corey lying about the pizza incident. Tori would go on to say, That was just so effed up, like I watched that back and I was really drunk during that time and I was just playing around. Just like enjoying the drama and not even thinking that it was gonna blow up to the extent that it did. So I feel really bad about that and I'm thankful that Fessy and Josh have both forgiven me. She further elaborated by saying, the reason why I was adamant to start drama that night is because the house was super boring. 
And I think that when you're on the show for so long and you get callbacks, at least I can speak for myself, I do feel this pressure to be entertaining. That's something that I always have to live with. Tori would also receive backlash from the fans of the show when her showmance with fellow castmates Emmanuel aired. It's important to keep in mind that Jordan's and Tori's relationship was extremely public. They met on the show and got engaged during filming of War of the Worlds 2. In view of all of the castmates and fans, and Jordan was very much liked and he still is, the choice to keep everything public was the choice of both Jordan and Tori. I say all of this because while Jordan was laying low, Tori seemed to move on very quickly, probably too quickly in the view of some fans, which led to a harsh and honestly really uncalled for comments such as, as boring as Casey is, at least she's faithful. Tori belongs to the streets. Remind me of the girls in school who would get passed around by the whole football team. That comment is just nasty and it's kind of disgusting and it makes me feel so bad for Tori. Like imagine receiving all these comments judging you on a daily basis. I have a lot of respect for her for just dealing with them. Furthermore, it wasn't just the fans that were upset with Tori, but things would escalate to a higher level when Tori would post a picture of her castmates of an upcoming season of the challenge. She would tag each one of them in the post, but she would replace Amanda's picture with a clown emoji. This would lead Amanda to publicly attack Tori with several tweets, including Sorry guys, I just got off of work. I didn't realize that roided out monster was such a fan. Thanks for highlighting me in your post, loser. <laughs> Gotta love Amanda, I guess. This was followed by, um, an upsetting tweet. Amanda would say, A children's author who doubles as a steroid injecting, um, prostitute. Um, rewind. We need to protect our kids from this monster. And she gracefully ended with, Lesson of the year part one. Don't throw stones when you live in a glass house, B. <laughs> and, Lessons of the year part two. Mess with the devil and you get the horns. Obviously, things escalated quickly, and while Tori did instigate the whole thing, Amanda's comments were extreme. This prompted Tori to threaten legal action against her fellow castmate Amanda. As far as I can tell though, no loss would actually happen. But this was just another instance of drama overshadowing Tori's performance. She had placed second during this season, and this marks her third final overall since the start of her career. Which is not a bad performance, she is obviously committed to her challenge career, and she is a beast on physical eliminations, but her strategy is just awful. And I hate to say it, but her personal life is a mess. Season 37 is another horrible season for Tori Deal. At this point, she had done three seasons back to back, and she would be back for the next season too, this time with her ex-fiance Jordan. Season 38 of the challenge known as Ride or Dies is a fun season to watch. Unlike the previous season which had a boring cast, at least in my opinion, this season was stacked and the dynamics between the players were very interesting. There was a lot of fights, drama, and the competition was top notch. We had a healthy mixture of rookies and vets, and the fact that they were often paired together made the whole thing really fun. The theme of the season, as the title of it suggests, revolves around contestants coming into the game with their ride or dies, whether that's their best friend, their family member, or even their significant other. Tori would be playing with Devin. The two's relationship has evolved from hating each other to working together and now becoming best friends, and it's very cute. They obviously enjoy each other's company and communicate very well. Moreover, they complement each other's strengths and weaknesses. Where Tori is strong physically but has, as we discussed in three videos now, a very bad strategy, Devin is all about strategy, so it's a match made in heaven. All is well, which is exactly why everything goes smoothly until Jordan shows up with Anissa as his ride or die to compete in the second episode of the season. This starts a series of arguments, drama, and fights, which frustrated me to no end. It all begins with Tori seeking out Jordan to apologize about the whole fessy thing. They have an open and what seems to be an honest conversation. And it was the worst thing I ever did. I'm so sorry. So sorry. You always have your back. You know, I'll always have yours. Tori cries and she apologizes to Jordan, and the whole thing seems to be healthy and it should have been the end of their interactions with each other this season, but it wasn't. Far from it, this was just the beginning. Side note though, her face here just breaks my heart. 
Even though it's been a year and a half since they saw each other or even spoken to each other, she seems to still care about him and her face looks just sad. Tori would go on to talk about how she struggled after the breakup and she spiraled out of control while filming one season of the challenge after another, which eventually led her to seek professional help. She went to therapy and she is now on medications, which is helping. She states that she is in a happy, healthy place and I'm glad for it. I really seek help and I'm on medication and I'm happy for myself. And so Tori and Jordan start off the season by being nice to each other. They play wrestle and they even cuddle one night night and they both state that they still find comfort in each other's company, which is completely understandable since the two were literally engaged to be married at some point. But the show seems to frame it like Tori sees this as an opportunity or at least a sign for them to rekindle things, while Jordan on the other hand has completely checked out and is just being friendly to her. Maybe it's just me though and that's how I saw all the edits going. But let me know if you still remember this season, if I'm wrong in the comments. It's fair to say that while they do get along, there is still a lot of tension between the two and it gets so much worse when Jordan starts spending time with another rookie girl called Nuris. They flirt openly, cuddle and Jordan even spends the night in Nuris's bed all while Tori is watching everything go down. This obviously leaves her upset, understandably, but her reaction will worsen how the fans of the show see her, or at least it did for me. Tori has spent the last two seasons flirting and getting close to guys on national television, and that's not a bad thing per se, but you have to imagine Jordan seeing all of that go down at home and I can't imagine that he was completely okay with it. Overall, she seemed to be moving on publicly on multiple occasions, so I struggled to understand her reaction of anger towards Jordan. Hurt and sadness I could understand, I mean I would feel the same way, but not anger. In my opinion, she had no right to be angry with him. But she was, she was very angry. Tori and Jordan would have their first fight where they both would lash out against each other. The disrespect! Ben, you've laid in my bed with me, I've been naked, we've said we love each other. Is it hard to see? Your ex-significant other snuggling, hooking up with people. I hate being a part of the Tory show. There's a lot of hurt If you're here. not there, then why would you get in my bed? And Jordan at this point seems to be completely checked out of this relationship or friendship. Nuris, to her credit, apologizes to Tori for hurting her feelings. And she gets sent home right after. <laughs> Tori and Anissa, and the rest of the house to be fair, all vote her for elimination against Amber. She loses and, well, surprise surprise, Norris is out. But just because Norris is gone, it doesn't mean that all the fighting is gonna stop. Nope. The game at this point would switch from pairs into teams, and Tori would find herself in a team with Johnny, Chansey, Anissa, Casey, Olivia, Nelson and Fessy, driven to protect her teammate Fessy, whose name is up for elimination. She approaches Jordan, who is probably gonna be the swing vote in this whole thing. I just, I just wanted you to be aware of how one, how one thing would make it good will affect our relationship. And she proceeds to give him an ultimatum. Basically, don't vote Fessy or our relationship will never be the same, inside or outside of the game. Which honestly just drove me crazy, like this is your ex-fiance, someone you repeatedly wanted to have a friendship with. Just in the last video, Tori regretted how she handled the breakup, specifically because she believed it ruined their chances to stay friends afterwards. Yet here she is doing the exact same thing, and it's over Fessy, again. Also this is completely my opinion here but I can't help but think that Jordan hates Fessy as Fessy sent him home on total madness and nearly dislocated his shoulder in the process only to then hook up with his fiance two months after they broke up on national television but yeah maybe he is holding a grudge against him I mean I would plus Fessy is a great physical threat he's very fit and has made it to previous finals before so at a game level it would make sense for Jordan to want to vote him out Anyways, Jordan resents Tori for leveraging their relationship in order to protect Fessy, and he votes him in for elimination. Fessy faces Nelson and he wins. After this point, the fights between Tori and Jordan became almost unbearable. I want off the Tori Jordan ride. They constantly bicker in front of everyone, and it's hard to focus on actual gameplay when all this drama is going on. Devin and Tori are working great together. Devin continues to make strategic alliances which protect them both all the way to the final, despite only winning one single daily challenge. But all of this is just overshadowed by the Tori Jordan show. 
Oh, and when Tori and Devon win a daily challenge, they use their power to vote in Fessy and Mariah against Nani and Johnny, which is a great strategic play because both Johnny and Fessy are beasts. But all the drama and fights with Jordan to not vote Fessy in, only for her to go in and vote him in when it's convenient for her, is just selfish. Tori's idea of strategy makes my head hurt. She's constantly doing way too much. Anyways, it's final time, and this final is epic. It's one of my favorites for the last few seasons. It will be run across 100 hours and it has a lot of stages in it. The final teams competing are Jordan and Anissa, Horacio and Olivia, Nani and Johnny, and of course, Tori and Devon. Tori and Devon are, again, working great together from the start. While the other couples are getting frustrated and angry at each other, Tori and Devon seem to be communicating very well, which gives them an early head start. This is maintained when Tori figures out the pattern to solve a complicated puzzle which is very impressive, and the two are on the way to win the whole thing. Tori's performance during this final is really impressive. She pushes herself and Devon to give their best, and she redeems her history with puzzles, having lost War of the Worlds 2 to a puzzle. She has obviously grown into a well-rounded competitor, but all of this is again overshadowed by the constant, never-ending drama of her personal life, which is such a shame. Anyways, the teams are faced with the famous eating portion of the challenge, and this time it's not gross food, which made me sad, I really liked that part. It was just an enormous amount of pasta, bread, and even vegan chocolate ice cream. My theory is that the production opted for quote-unquote normal food because of Tori's vegan diet. She had previously refused to participate in eating portions because it went against her strict diet. In fact, during this final, Devin drank all of the smoothies which were made of fish guts for her, which had its own massive controversy that I will cover later on. Anyways, in the last phase of the final, Tori and Devin would go head to head with Johnny and Nani, the final remaining team, and they win. After 6 seasons, 69 episodes, 3 finals, all the struggles and backlash she received across 7 long years, she did it. Tori Deal is finally a challenge champion. The pair chose to share the prize money with their fellow 6 finalists and give each player $38,000. Much respect for them for choosing to do that. But the negative comments and backlash which has haunted Tori Deal's journey on the challenge would not end by her proving herself to be deserving of the title of champ because a lot of people, including her castmates, didn't think she deserved it. Fellow castmates and finalist Johnny Bananas can be quoted saying on the Death, Taxes and Bananas podcast, Tori and Devon, the reason that they were in the position they were in is because they didn't follow the rules with the drinking on the bolas. If I put a cup on you, that was your cup to drink. You could only put your cup on other people. You weren't allowed to take the cup that I put on you and put that on someone else's. And that's what they did. They were taking everyone's cups and putting them. So all that they had at the end was their own. They should have had to come back and do it, but whatever. Water under the bridge. Johnny also took a stab at Tori's chosen diet by saying, Tori is a vegan and I'm like, come on, vegans ruin everything. Tori would respond to these allegations on her Instagram story with two posts. When asked by a fan if she thinks Horacio should have been able to help his partner Olivia with the ball shooting portion of the challenge, since Devin helped Tori by drinking all the smoothies, she responded with, I didn't have to drink it because it's in my contract that they have to respect my vegan diet. And when she was asked by another fan about her reaction to viewers thinking she cheated by not participating in the smoothie drinking portion, she responded by deflecting blame and outright blaming the production by saying, that was production's fault. They gave us the green light to go without fully explaining the rules. Then production pulled us over during the tire checkpoint and gave Devon two more glasses to drink, so that wasn't our fault. It's obvious that Tori's win was being disregarded left and right, and moreover, it hadn't done much in swaying the public's opinion back in her favor. Specifically, the whole strict vegan diet was coming under question by the fans, and while it's silly to attack someone for their eating habits, it becomes complicated when that said diet gives them a clear advantage in a game worth $1 million. Reactions to this issue ranged from being really funny, such as, Hey, at Tori Deal, where do you get your vegan food? 
She most definitely ain't vegan and got hips like that. Tori Deal has to release a log of everything she ate during filming or else she's a fake vegan who's lying and should have her championship revoked. And finally, well, the point is that Tori didn't have to complete one part of the challenge because it's in her contract that producers have to respect her vegan diet. So basically, it appears she's only serious about it when it gives her an advantage in the competition. And then there was the more serious tweets, which swayed my opinion and displayed a kind of favoritism from the production side towards Story, with fans tweeting things such as, It's funny because people shot on Fessy for refusing to drink pig's blood, which is A. Grosser than the concoction that season 38 finalists had to drink, but B. It went against his religion. But then when Tori Tori does it, it isn't a big deal because she's vegan. This was followed by a lot of fans tweeting things such as, why wasn't Fessy given a pass in one of those finals due to his religion? Why wasn't DM given a pass for a lot while battling cancer? Instead, production chose to play on her illness and the side effects that came with her treatments. Why does Tori Deal get handed a win? So if I'm reading this correctly, they weren't allowed to have any eating challenges this season that weren't vegan because of Tori's contract. That's some bullshit. If you can't play the full game, then don't show up. Jenna and Jay had to quit a final because Jenna wouldn't eat. And because of all of this happening, season 38, which should have been Tori's best season of her career, is still not a good season for her. Not only did winning didn't fix her public image, it arguably made it worse. In part 1 of the series, I made a 40 minutes video in which I actively state how much I like Tori Deal, why she was my favorite and how I couldn't wait to see her upcoming seasons. I was a first time watcher of the show so I had no idea what would take place in the future. All I know is that I connected with her so much so that I made a YouTube channel. But across season after season, things slowly changed. I still respected her physical performance every season, but I also started to dislike her character. The whole reason I liked Tori so much in Dirty 30 was because she was funny, goofy, and likable, but she quickly changed into a cringy, over-the-type version of what made me like her in the first place. Her massive ego and overall entitled attitude was too much to watch season after season after season. Her backstory and debut as an underdog going against a challenge giant in Cara Maria made it super easy to root for her to win in War of the Worlds 2. I had my issues with Cara Maria in my first video, but I recognized that all the hate she got from social media affected her, to a degree that she had to take a 7 year break from the challenge. She worked on herself and prioritized her mental health and I have a lot of respect for her for that. I just wish I could say the same about Tori Deal. To anyone who's gonna watch part 1 of the series, I'm sorry the quality is so bad. <laughs> it was my first video ever, my editing was horrible and I was recording on my iPhone. I basically had no idea what I was doing. Not sure if I do now, but I like to think that I came a long way since that video was published. That being said, I put a lot of work in it and I hope you can enjoy it. If you would like to see me cover any other challenge contestants, please leave a comment down below and thank you for watching.